Well, it's been a while since I've made a video like this, just talking to the camera. But trust me, we're gonna have a lot of interesting graphics and whatnot for you to get a full understanding of what we're talking about today. And that is tools that every software engineer should know. We're gonna be covering a lot of the basic tools that basically you use throughout the entire software engineering workflow. Some you may be using, probably are using, but we're gonna be talking about why they're important and more that they can do that you may not know about. And then some more specific tools that should really help your workflow. So I guess let's get into it. Tool number one is your text editor IDE, whatever you wanna call it, there are some differences, but this is your Visual Studio Code, your JetBrains IDEs like PyCharm and IntelliJ IDEA, uh, Eclipse for Java, and you know, you get the idea. It could also be Vim, but let's get real. Vim users are the type of individuals that take the last coffee out the pot, put it back without turning off the burner. I don't associate myself with those people. <laughs> Every chance I get a Vim user, gotta take my jabs. <laughs> I guess now would not be a good time to tell people that I primarily use NeoVim for. IDEs allow you to write, test, and debug your code very easily. So you're able to have your entire project in there. I'm sure you understand this. You have all of your files. You're able to run it, you know, compile your code, test your code, debug your code, run your code, see how it works. Typically there's some sort of terminal in there so you or console so you can see how uh, it works, output, whatever it may be. And you can run it directly from there. But there's a lot more to an IDE than meets the eye. For example, when you're working in a team, you wanna make sure that all of your formatting and style guidelines are consistent within the code base. So how do you do that? You set those up within your IDE, so every single time you save, it saves in formats and styles your code to be consistent with everyone else on your team so the code base is uniform. That's a big thing, as well as a lot of what you've seen in my uh, Visual Studio Code setup video, which a lot of y'all probably have seen, is that there are a lot of extensions that can really help you. These extensions act as tools, maybe, maybe more in-depth tools than what your IDE has by default because they know you can add extensions. Like there are linters that you can add. There are other types of formatters and style guideline type deals you can add. There are extensions that allow you to test and debug your code even easier as well. There are AI extensions that, you know, AI code completion or your, what is GitHub Copilot called? AI pair programmer. So these are extensions that you can install inside your editor that just helps your workflow overall. And that's why it's important to pick the right IDE and figure out how that can help you. Because at the end of the day, it's a tool. You wanna make sure it looks pretty, sure, but make sure it can help you do what you do, coding, as easy as possible. Break down all the barriers. That's why the IDE that you choose is very important. The next tool is a version control system. So version control, basically most of these systems will be based on Git. Git is version control basically, but the platforms that you'll be using will typically be GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket. There are other ones as well, but those are the three that I have primarily used in the past. And basically what version control is, is, you know, back in school when you had to write an essay, you know, you had to have the plan and then you had to have the rough draft and then you had to have the final draft. And then you realize that final draft wasn't as good. So then you save as a new final draft version two, and then, oh, you got to mess up or mess with something there. And then you have a save as a final draft version three. Well, now you have five versions of the same article or same essay, whatever. You have all of those. And that's basically version control because you can reference each individual version of that essay from conception to where you are now. That is the idea of version control. But it automatically does it. Every single time you do a new commit, well, you can always revert back to the previous version or however many versions back that you wanna go, not just the immediate previous. And that's very important because if you completely break the code base, okay, well, let's revert back <laughs> for now. Make sure that's in production, which you shouldn't be you know, pushing broken code to production, but eh, everyone's broken a code base or two in their day. <laughs> but then you can go ahead and figure out how you broke it. So, so that's one of the benefits of a version control system. So it allows you to revert to previous versions, but overall it, it manages changes to your code base and allows you to collaborate with other developers, whether that be open source on something like GitHub public repositories, or it can be on a private repository on any of these platforms that I previously mentioned within your team. 
For example, at my old software engineering job, and trust me, I can really go into depth about this, but I'll try to keep it as simple as possible. At my old job, our uh, virtual control system had multiple different branches. So we had development branch, we had test branch, and then we had a release branch. And these would all push to different servers. So the development branch would push to the development server. And that is where all of the code that you're working on, I'm working on, he's working on, she's working on, would all come together. But before it would all come together, we would create feature branches for whatever task you're working on would be its own branch. So that way you can not alter the code base that we're all working on until later when you all, you know, you commit and then pull all of those uh, feature branches into the development branch. So that's the overall idea of how the development branch works. And that's where all of your code comes together. And then obviously you build it on your local server, but the development server allows you to test everything with everyone else's code on the development server. And then once all of that is done, typically at the end of your sprint, you will push it over to your um, test branch. And that test branch is basically your quality assurance branch that pushes up to that server that then your client or your quality assurance testers, your beta testers, whoever may be, will try to break your code. And if they break it, well, you gotta fix it. If not, then for your next release, you push it over to the release branch, which builds to the production server. And that's your basically your final application that's your build application that they use in the real world environment. So to be able to do all of that neatly and nicely is, is, is very dependent on a version control system. CICD or continuous integration and deployment is the next tool. This is your Jenkins or Circle CI or Travis CI, or I know GitHub has their own CICD if I recall correctly, although I haven't used it. No, I think I've used it once. Anyway, the idea is just automation. It automates your build, test and deploy processes. So in other words, it makes sure that your code can build properly. If your code is broken, something's wrong, then it's not going to build properly and you don't want it to break elsewhere. So that's what that aspect is for. And then it runs all of the tests that you hopefully wrote for your code and make sure your code passes all of those tests. And then it can deploy it to, like I talked about previously, your development server, your QA server, or your production server. I don't really know much more to talk about the CICD. Sometimes less is more, and that's really all you need to know. It automates that process so you don't need to do it manually. CICD. And of course, when you're building a project, well, you kind of have to manage that project. And then you have issues and you have to track those issues. So this is where your project management issue tracking software comes into play. So this is your Jira or Notion or Trello or Monday.com. Some are more specific to software development than others. Some are more customizable like Notion. When I was a professional software engineer, I used Jira. Now that I do all of my work solo, and sometimes I'll pull in like other developers or when I'm working on other projects, I'll pull in other like contractors or employees, team members, I use Notion. But most of what I talk about will probably be in the context of Jira. But the overall idea of this tool is to keep track of tasks, bugs, and deadlines. And to ensure that everyone on the on your team is on the same page. So for example, when you have a big project, that project is typically broken into sprints. A sprint is typically like two weeks. My sprints were always three weeks. And you set up that sprint, figuring out what you're going to do, what you're going to work on, the high priority things that need to be done now over the next three weeks. These are broken down into stories, which are then broken down even smaller into tasks. And these tasks are going to be anywhere from 30 minutes to I don't know, even five, six hours, anything beyond that, then maybe you'd want to make it a story and break that down into smaller one, two, three hour tasks. And you pull all of this stuff from the backlog into your sprint. And when you're working on the sprint, you'll have three columns, your to do column, your in progress column, and your done column. So whenever you're working on something, so your team member isn't working on the same thing as you, you assign that task to yourself, pull it over to the in progress column, and go from there. Now you know what you're working on. Everyone else knows what you're working on. And once you're done, you do it over there. And obviously you use a version control system in the feature branch, push that over to development branch, move on to the next, you get the idea. It is incredibly important issue tracking, project management to make sure everyone's on the same page and no one's working on redundant things and you, everyone is working on the priority. And then the final, what I'd say more broad tool would be is a uh, code analysis software. So I always used Sonar Cube. There are plenty of other ones out there. The idea is to locate and identify anything that your IDE or extensions missed in regards to bugs and vulnerabilities, to code smells, 
your code coverage, your duplicated code, because you wanna make sure that that's consolidated into one thing. And overall, just to reduce technical debt so you have the cleanest code possible. We would always set aside a certain amount of time per week to work on this technical debt to try to get our score as good as possible. I forget if we try to get it down or try to get it up. Either way, reduce as many code smells, as many bugs, as many vulnerabilities as possible. And then a few more, I would say, specific tools. One would be package management. It's something that you're going to use one way or another, but this is like your NPM, your PIP, your Maven. And what it really helps software engineers do is install and manage dependencies and libraries, those that your code depends on. I'm sure you've used it or seen it, especially if you've do, done stuff with web development because I feel like you're pulling in different types of things all the time with it, but that's the idea. As well as another very important one being testing frameworks. So like JUnit, NUnit, PyTest, it'll help you write automated tests for your code to test that code. The idea here is to write multiple tests for particular aspects of your code in order to ensure that it's working properly. Like if you only want to, this is a very simple example. If you only want to be able to insert a number in a form between one and 100, well, you're gonna write tests that test the outer bounds of that. So it tests one, it tests 100, but it also tests 101 and it tests zero. And it tests some in between, whatever. That's just a very, very basic idea and it makes sure that, hey, you cannot do the outside limits, but you can do the outer limits, make sure everything is set properly. So gosh, that was a bad example, I'm out of practice. But that <laughs> that's the idea. Tests are very important. And luckily now we have a lot of AI software and other types of software that'll probably make an entire video on that can help you write tests so you don't have to do it all the time. And then two more, one I mentioned was a, a linter. So this is something that can help you identify some of those code smells or bugs and vulnerabilities before they get to production or development or anywhere where your code analysis software is then picking it apart. You can catch it while you're coding instead of retroactively. And then finally, the terminal. This is a should know, not a need to know tool, I assume. It's kind of a need to know, okay. It's kind of a need to know. I just know some people who try to, you know, they want to use uh, GUIs all the time instead of going to the terminal, but the terminal is so helpful in your workflow. It's why a lot of people, all right, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna give Vim some credit, you know what I mean? It, it's, it's when, it's, it's why a lot of people use Vim because you're not, you don't even need to use this. You are just using your keyboard and you are, typing away, using all these shortcuts and whatnot in order to this and that. And it and once you learn it, it's one of those things, once you learn it, it really increases your productivity workflow. It really increases your efficiency because you don't have to, like all that time, just, you know, grabbing the mouse and going over here and then doing this. It, it just eliminates all of that because it's all, it's all right on your keyboard. And going through everything, your directories and, and a lot, there's a lot more to it within your terminal. I made an entire video on some like terminal and Unix commands that I use, whatever, especially when you're using different ports and you gotta kill this one and do this over here. There's a lot to it and terminal is a lifesaver. So have like a little cheat sheet somewhere for your most used commands within the terminal. And that's really what I'm talking about is like Unix commands and whatnot. And it'll be a huge help, trust me. But those are the tools that you'll use as a software engineer that you should know that many of which that you need to know, and whether you're working on your own projects or whether you're working in the workforce. Hope you all found some value out of this video. It's very weird just kind of going off the dome instead of having a, a deep research back video like my Linux video or like the Alan Turing video or any of those, but it's very refreshing. I kind of miss this. Y'all miss this? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> I continue to make a lot more videos like this to help software engineers of all skill levels, particularly new ones, as well as computer science students, a lot of those videos to come, as well as these computer science history type and new technology type video essays, whatever you wanna call them, that I've been making as well. So if you like any of that, make sure you're subscribed. I'd really appreciate it. If you don't like any of that, then don't subscribe because then you're just a go subscriber and you ruined my click through rate and subscriber count is not for my vanity. It's just for, to make sure you get the video that I, upload when I upload it. That's it. Oh, so in that case, ring the bell. Like the video. I'll see you on the next one.